for the posthumous induction of Dr. teaching the same one o'clock class. <laughs> Two teachers. <laughs> He relished working with students. 
And that's why uh, many professors take laboratory assignments and say, I'll pass those off to my, my teaching assistants because it takes so darn much time. Not Ed. He relished spending that time with students one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Whether it was the proper way to dissect a cow eyeball or how to uh, do bioelectric recordings overnight in a sleep laboratory and identify sleep stages. Um, he, he loved his students. He told me one time near the end of his career here that he stayed because he fell in love with students. And, and they loved him back. I was, I was on his retention promotion tenure committees and I was just astounded when I would look at the student evaluations of his teaching because there was never a negative comment. I mean, I can't recall one. Uh, Ed retired a few times <laughs> and the university would call him back. It, was, it, it almost seemed like a, like a game. It, it was like, so we're going to change over all the data management systems at the university to PeopleSoft. Someone has to lead the way on this. Who can do it? And then somebody would go, I know. We'll get Ed Sadaki to do it. And he, he would come in, come back out of retirement, and do his thing. Uh, when he passed away in August of 2014, he was just a couple of weeks <clears throat> short of what he swore was going to be his real, for sure, absolute, real capital R retirement. Uh, and, and he was, at that time, chairing the sociology department. Um, so, he really never left us. Um, can I get Tanya and Raymond to come up here and do a... Kirk? <laughs> On behalf of their dad. My name is Ray Sasaki, and uh, I think that was just a wonderful uh, introduction or, or an overview of my father. And I don't think I can top that. And I think, that, like in my family, I'm the black sheep, so everything I do kind of brings the, the average down. <laughs> so um, my sister kind of reminded me that I'm the only one, there's three of us, I'm the only one that's not a doctor. So that's kind of gives you an idea of. Uh, kind of what I had to, to, to live with. Um, well, all right. I was just going to say thanks, thank you for for honoring my father and the people that came to uh, to do so, as well as uh, all the uh, inductees. Uh, I, I am a magic magician at the Magic Castle, so uh, without taking up too much time, uh, I'll do something like my father loved. He was my number one fan, so I will. Uh, and it, that came from his father. So I guess I'll kind of just trying to see what, how I'm going to split this up. I'll do something here. There's many different ways to uh, pick a card, choose a card. So I won't. Uh, I'll do something. I think that unless you're really into the magic circle, you're not going to see this because, like I said, pick a card, choose a card. I'll give kind of the front and a back, kind of like one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll do six, okay, just because it's, it's easy. But to do six cards, that's a little bit more difficult. Uh, keeping track of one, keeping track of two, but six is a little harder. I'm going to be off the mic, so can everyone hear me? Yeah. All right, so, so here's what we have. Uh, this is a 
one-handed cut. For those of you who play cards, if it's a little difficult to do. Um, if you master that, you can do one, two one-handed cuts, okay, just like that. This is a one-handed cut with a back flip. A one-handed cut with a front flip is a little bit more impressive looking. It looks something like that. But, um, and if you really get into it, now I probably could have gotten a doctorate for the time it took to do this. <laughs>